perfectly prepared just for you to walk on. Your destiny and calling is sure. Your purpose and plan, only you can walk and fulfill it. God's made it just for you. How many wants to get there? How many wants to fulfill their calling in God? Amen. That's why you're here tonight. Amen. You're hungry and thirsty for God. Amen. Yeah, give yourself a big hand. So I was, I had a couple different things on Saturday and Sunday. I was praying and, and uh, yesterday the Lord gave me this scripture just out of the blue. And it just blew me away. Amen. And I know that God's brought you each, each of you here tonight. Amen. He's, it's not a, a, a happenstance. It's not a chance. It's not a chance, Michael, that I had to go to the yard today, this morning, first thing. It's not a chance, sister, that I had to go to McDonald's and bring the guys lunch. I already told Pastor Tim, I'll go a mile ago with my brother. And I ended up in, in New Martinsville. It was a little bit closer. I'm like, I'm go to my mouth, though. But God has his hand on you. God has his hand on you. God has his hand on you. You, 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 you. He has his hand on all of us, right? Amen. He loves us. Amen. We want to get to that promised land over Brother Fred. How many love Brother Fred? Is he an awesome inspiration or not? Right. He's 85 years young like Caleb. And he went down and defeated the giants. Amen. We're defeating giants tonight, brother. Amen. It's in Deuteronomy 32, verse 48. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain of Barah, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho, and behold the land of Canaan. Can you all just picture in your mind the land of Canaan? Amen. God wants us to get to heaven, doesn't he? But he is a land of Canaan for each one of us now to walk in, okay? But it's up to us if we're going to get there. God the Father's already done all the hard work. He's done all the heavy lifting, right? He sent his treasure of his heart, his son. Amen. To die on that cruel, uh, cruel rugged cross. Come on, brother. Amen. To shed his innocent blood, his pure, spotless, sinless, holy, precious blood. So that we can all make it to the promised land, right? But we're all on a journey. And I can't take your journey. You can't take my journey. But we can, Brother Baron, some of the elders here, we can encourage you. Amen. We can inspire you with our testimony and our example that you can make it. Amen. You can make it. Everybody say it. and die in the mount. Wow. My goodness. Mama, come on, brother. Come on. Come on. Whither thou goest up and be gathered unto thy people, and Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor and was gathered unto his people as Aaron was. Amen. God told Moses to die. Come on. Moses didn't make it, you guys. Come on. Moses, the one, the one that uh, saw the burning bush. The one that saw the ten plagues destroy an empire. The one that saw God part the Red Sea and leave probably two million plus people across it out of bondage. The one that saw manna come down from heaven. The one that saw his glory and carried his glory on his face and had to put a veil when he came into the presence of people. He didn't make it into the promised land, Brother Baron. My goodness, Moses. Oh, my. If Moses didn't make it, guess what? There's a good chance we won't make it. Amen. Unless we can find the key. How many wants to find the key to secure their destiny, to secure their eternity? Amen. Amen. It says in verse 
verse 51. Because you trespassed against me. Among the children of Israel, the waters of Meribah, Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because you sanctify me not. God wants the glory, doesn't he? God the Father deserves the glory, doesn't he? Amen. He gets all the glory. He says, in the midst of the children of Israel, yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go. Come on, brother. My goodness, Pastor Tim. Come on, brother. Come on. What exactly happened? Let's go to Numbers 20, verse 1. Numbers 20, verse 1, okay? If you can turn your Bibles to Numbers 20, verse 1. Then came the children of Israel into the whole congregation into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people of Odin, Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there and there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and the people showed with Moses and spake saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Even though they saw the Red Sea part, even though they saw the Jordan turn to blood red. Amen. Even though they saw all the hand of God. Amen. Their faith just evaporated that quick, didn't it? Ours came too, Kevin. Amen. Unless we got that key. We need that key, right? Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Jesus. My, my. Come on. And boy, have you brought up the congregation of the Lord into this what? This wilderness. That we and our cattle should die there. And wherefore have you made us to come out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? They haven't made it to the promised land yet, guys. Okay, we haven't either. We've seen bits and pieces, right? We've tasted of the, the Lord and seen that he's good. But how many wants to reside there 24-7 like a pastor takes me preaching? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It says, at word for every made us to come out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place, and it's no place of sea or of figs, or of vines, or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went for the, from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they were so distraught, they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. On, so what did he say, guys? He said to speak, right? And Moses took the rock from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. Amen. That's symbolic of who? Jesus. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. Oh my, that wasn't a good thing, was it, Pastor Tim? On, How many's been there? Yeah, How many's called others rebels? They never let them do what you want them to do. I've been there many, many times. Come on, brother. But Moses, he said, here now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Come on. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he spoke to the rock, right? No, he smote the rock. Amen. He ruined the type of shadow for all ages to come. The first time he, he hit the rock, just like our blessed, beloved Jesus was bruised and battered beyond recognition, right? But he did, God did not put his son through that two times. Let go of control. 
was February of 92. And I never looked back. Has nothing to do with me. It's all Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Can we give Jesus another big hand? It's all him. He said, and Moses lifted up his hand with his rod. He smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank. And their beasts also. That's how merciful our Father is, right? Come on, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because you believe me not. Come on, brother. I try. Come on. To sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore you shall not. Bring this congregation into the land. Can everybody say the land? The land. The land. How many wants to go to the land? On, How many wants to experience the land, the promised land? Now, amen. Yeah. Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on right. earth yes. as it is in heaven. Now, we don't have to wait till the great by and by. When we're in the great by and by, we don't really need the gifts of the Spirit, do we? We need them now. We need the Holy Ghost, the presence of power of God now to do that great work for God. To have an offering to lay down at our beautiful Savior's feet. What is their offering? Souls, people, the ones Jesus died for. He loves you so much. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He wants you to make this. He wants you to make that. Amen. Wow, he doesn't want you just to survive. He wants you to thrive. 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 Carry his life to this darkened world. That's what God wants. And that's what you can have if you take that key. Amen. Amen, brother. Is this too loud? No. Oh, Father. Jesus. There's only one way, you guys. There's only one key. There's only one path. There's only one path. This is the real gospel I'm preaching tonight. Amen. Amen. This is the real gospel truth. Come on, Amen. Come on, brother, brother. We have to die. Yes. We Hell have it. to die. Hell it. Hell it. Hell it. Hell it. We have to die to our will, to our emotions, Come on, to our mindsets, to our attitudes. We have to be crucified with Christ. Come on, brother. And yet we live. But it's not us that lives. It's Christ who lives within us. And it's Christ who will unfold the red carpet in your life. Come on. We have to let go of control. We have to surrender. Like last Wednesday, I was talking. My heart was going out to those teenagers that were here. It's all about surrendering. Christianity's surrendering one layer at a time. The Holy Spirit's so gentle, so lovely, so good. He said here, I need this. You don't need this. I got something so much better for you. Would you trust me? Take, let me have that. Amen. Is he awesome or what? Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother Juan. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We have to surrender, you guys. Come on, brother. Come on. Luke 17, it says, Jesus talking, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Come on, Come on brother. That's the survival mentality, right? Believe me, like I was telling on Friday night, those hot dogs are going to run out. It's one meal on the street. Right? We have Jesus to give them. Jesus is the one that's going to see them through, help them get it, get through, make it through, right? Jesus. How many know that Jesus is a miracle worker? You're looking at one right here. I'm a miracle. I'm still in the, in the process. Nobody's arrived, right? Nobody's arrived. My preacher told me that after 45 years going to the streets. Serving God with all of his heart. He said, no one's arrived. We're on a journey. Right? Tomorrow we can make a change. We can make a change. Uh, uh, decision in our mind and say, we're going to go this way. Right? 
it says everyone works out their own salvation with fear and trembling. It's a daily surrender, a daily crucifixion. If we think we've done it once and we wake up tomorrow, we got to do it again. And again and again and again. And if not, we get a spiritual pride. Jesus from his disciples from 
live. About his stones cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat, you guys, was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. That's the agony of releasing his will to take on the sins of the world, of all human history. Great drops of blood. Our dear Savior laid down his life for us. Can we do the same? Freely. We can give our life. Just like he said. Freely I give it. Freely. Look at that precious Jesus. Amen. Come on, brother. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And said to them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, one of his friends, went before them and drew near to Jesus to what? Kiss him. The kiss of death. Is that where that comes from, Pastor Tim? Wow. Come on. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Wow. What agony. Do you think Hallelujah. that was harder for Jesus, maybe? Hallelujah. Come on. To be betrayed by his friend like that? I mean, that was tough, wasn't it? Woo. Jesus could have defended himself. Guess what, you guys? We don't have rights. I'm sorry. We don't have rights. Come on. Come on. A dead man doesn't have it when a dead man is laying in the casket right here. He doesn't have any rights. He can't react. If somebody says something to him, he's not going to say a word, is he? We're supposed to be dead. Dead. To our will. To our way. To our time. To our family, our emotions, or everything about us. We're supposed to crucify it and trust Jesus to raise up his work in us. His way. His heart. His destiny. Amen. That's the only way we're going to find it. That's the key. We have to die. He told Moses, die, Moses. Jesus died for his life. Let's go to Luke 4, verse 1. And I might have shared this before, but there's some guests here. And Jesus, being once full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by what? The Spirit of God. Into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. When they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it may be bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of who? God. God. That's our source. Come on. Come on. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. Satan got that. When Adam and Eve took of the fruit, right, and disobeyed God, and didn't die to themselves, and their will, Come on. they will that I want to be like a God. Come on. Right? They missed it. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's when we get it in our DNA. We all have it. Amen. We all want to hold on to our will. Right? Come on. We all want to hold on to our life. Mama. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. And he brought him into Jerusalem, the devil, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, 
For it is written, he twisted the word, didn't he? He shall give his angels charge over thee and keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. How many knows we've got to have this word? We've got to know this word. That's why we come to church, right? On Sunday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And whenever the doors are open, we're hungry. We've got to have it. We've got to inoculate ourselves. We've got to vaccinate ourselves. Amen. We've got to saturate ourselves with the word of God. Amen. Because the devil knows he has a short time. Amen. And he's after souls too. Right. Jesus hungered not for food. He hungered for souls. That's why he did everything, right? Amen. It says, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit after this. After Jesus died to his mind, to his flesh, to his will. Jesus was received the power of the Holy Spirit to begin his ministry. You want a ministry? You gotta die. You gotta die. I know. I had to die. I have to die daily. I've had to die many, many times in ministry. Amen. Am I saying right, Brother Baron? You got to die. If you want to do something for God to give Him glory, you've got to be crucified. He lifts Him up, Jesus up. He gets all the glory. We can't do anything for God if we're not dead and crucified. We'll take the glory. Be careful. Be careful. And there went out a fame of him through all the region above. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he taught them, you guys, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Right? I'm going to make you a fisher of men. That's why I came to earth from heaven. To, to get men and women to populate heaven. My father wants children. My father wants children. My father wants children, right? Amen. Come on, come on. Jesus. Jesus died to his flesh, his mind, his soul. Amen. And when he surrendered, he was rewarded, right? That's how the power of God comes. Amen. Amen. When we surrender to God, when we surrender to God, he knows he can trust us. You can only trust in Jesus in someone. Did you all know that? I don't care if it's family, friend, or foe. I tell my wife and kids this my whole life, raising them. You can only trust in Jesus in someone. If you let your guard down and go to a family event, and you have them pray and put that full armor on, right? And you let down your guard because emotionally they're your family. You love them. Guess what? I've been slapped many, many times. I've been kicked and beat many, many times. It says your enemies will be those of your own house. On, Familiarity, blue breeds, contempt. Familiarity, family. Right? Come on, brother. Jesus, we've got to surrender. Amen. He was rewarded. He began his ministry. He started his journey, right? In ministry there. What journey was it, you guys? What journey did Jesus start right there? And then let's go to John 3.13. John 3.13, and no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is a God the Father speaking this to Nicodemus. This is Jesus, the 
sacrifice, the Lamb of God. Jesus already knew it in John chapter 3. Come on, brother. That he was born to die. That was his journey. And if we're a Christian, y'all, we're born again to die to him. Yes. Come That's on, it. My, my. We're born again to die to him. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Jesus. On. Yes, Jesus. You know, but I'm just here tonight, Pastor Tim, Brother Bear, different ones that preach, Brother Eric, Brother Billy, different ones that testify and share. We're just here to help you, encourage you, inspire you. Did you know Jesus had some encouragement along the way? Amen. This just came me out of nowhere, Pastor Tim, yesterday. Come on, come on, bro. Let's go to Mark 9, verse 2. Mark 9, verse 2. Glory, God. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into that high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining and seeming white as snow. So as no fuller on earth can wipe them. And there appeared unto them Elias or Elijah with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. Talking with Jesus. Have you ever wondered what maybe they were saying? I might have my own Christian walk. And he passed it to him. Brother Bear, Brother John. I don't know, but yesterday, what if? I'm not saying this is, I'm not being dogmatic and saying this is doctrine. Come on. What if Moses said, Jesus, I missed it. I missed it going into the promised land. I missed fulfilling my ultimate purpose and plan for God the Father. I missed it, Jesus. I don't want you to miss it. Come on. I want to help you, Jesus. I want to tell you. You gotta go to that cross. You gotta die, Jesus, and you're gonna feel the resurrection power of Christ in you. You're gonna rise the third day. Amen. And what about Elijah, and Pastor Tim? Come on. Elijah said, Guess what? Jesus, I did it. I did it. I did it. I died to myself. I died to my title. I died to my position. I relinquished my office. I gave it to Elisha. And guess what? A chariot of fire came up out of heaven and took me up. A chariot of fire. Come on. Wow. Can you imagine, Pastor Tim? Maybe, maybe they said, you can do it, Jesus. This is the way. Come on. Go to that cross. And watch what God's going to do. Yes. Watch what God's going to do in your life if you take a chance and go to that cross tonight and surrender. Lean not to your own understanding. Just acknowledge Jesus. He'll direct your path. He's directed my path actually all my life. But when I gave him and made him more, he just rolled out the red carpet. Through the valleys and the mountains and the valleys and the mountains, Jesus has been my stay, my anchor, my rock. Amen. Can anybody give Jesus a big hand? Oh, Father. My, 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 my. How did Jesus respond? Let's go to Matthew 16. I'm trying to hurry. Matthew 16, 21. From that time forth, can you all say tonight? From this time forth. One, two, three. From this time forth. From this time forth. I'm going to make a decision. Amen. To follow Jesus. To die to myself. To crucify my flesh. To give me the steering wheel. From this time forth. Began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem after this, right? And suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes. Mama, come on. Oh my goodness, not the Roman soldiers or the unbelievers or make believers. The people of God, the religious, the religious the elders, the scribes, the priests. Wow. When he 
was the high priest, Pastor Tim, and he knew it. Come on, bro. He had to take a humble place, right? And be killed. And be raised again the third day. How did his disciples react? Verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You're not coming wrong me of God's best. I'm not settling for God's good. Jesus said, I want his best. How many want his best? Amen. He said, Thou art an offense unto me, to Peter. Uh -huh. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Come on. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man or woman will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We've read that, okay? This is the second time. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. We need to hear it again and again and again and again, don't we, God? For what is a man profited that he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. This is Jesus telling him beforehand. He's already got the picture. He's going to come in the glory of his Father. Jesus had that on the forefront of his mind. That was the prize of his high calling. Amen. To be what? King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Let's go to Revelation 19. He knew he was coming for his bride someday. It was worth it all to him to rule and reign forever and ever. Revelation 19, 11. And I saw heaven open and the whole of white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. That flame of fire was passion and love for his bride, I believe. Amen. Amen. It was worth the all of Jesus. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped dip in blood. His blood. Amen. And his name called. His name is called what? The Word of God. Remember what we're telling you that? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. How many wants to be a part of that army? I know that's why you're here tonight. If you make it, if you make it, if you take this key tonight, and if you make a decision in your heart to die to yourself, to your wealth, to your time, your talents, your treasures, your travel, to your family, your friends, your foes, to your past, your present, your future, to your purpose, plan, calling, and destiny. Amen. To your affection, attention, adoration, to your finances, to every part of your being, to your heart, your soul, your mind, your will, your body. You'll make it. You'll be part of that army. This was the culmination. This is the culmination of the Lord's journey. This is his example. The Father is taking each one of us on a journey, right? Isaiah 43, 19. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior tonight, please don't leave here without doing that tonight, okay? It says, behold, I will do what? A new thing. Can everybody say a new thing? I'm not. Oh my. He said now. Everybody say now. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? You'll see it. He's going to reveal himself to you. Jesus is going to make himself known to you in an intimate way that only you and him know. 
and rivers of the desert that water, right? Amen. <sighs> Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Who needs peace in their mind tonight? Amen. There's so much going on in the world. There's so much going on in the United States. There's so much going on right in here in our minds. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. What did he leave his disciples with? A big mega church? A big TV contract to get the gospel out? He breathed his peace on them. How many wants him to breathe his peace on you tonight? Yes, 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 yes. He said, the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you what? A future and a hope. Hope, faith, hope, and love. Amen. What did Paul say? I'm trying to hurt my lips from what I started. But come on, Paul said, but what things were gained to me, those I cannot have lost for Christ, not for himself. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things the loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may what? Win Christ and be found where? In Him. Not having my own righteousness is like filthy rags we think we're righteous. Which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know Him and the power of His what? His resurrection. Power! His resurrection! Power! That's what we're after, right? Yeah. We can't go on the streets without His resurrection power. Yeah. Right? We can't go into the schools without His resurrection power. Amen! Yeah. We need Him, don't we? Glory, hallelujah. In the fellowship of His sufferings, being made conformable unto His what? His death. But Jesus said, I'll give you abundant life, right? He does. But we gotta die first. If by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect or mature spiritually. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus, brethren and sisters. I can't let myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, forgetting them, Forget it. Come on. and reaching forth unto those things which are before, letting go of our past, like Pastor Ted preaches, so we can grab our future in God. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high, high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Are we pressing the press? Amen. The press. It's a, it kills. It kills the flesh. The press. The wine press, right? The press. The olive press. They get one drop of oil out of that olive. One drop. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. What Jesus said. Brother, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as you have us for an example. So Moses is our example, right? What not to do, right? Jesus is our example. Paul's our example, right? We are required to do one thing, guys. Count our lives as done. Count what we know as done. Count what we have experienced thus far as done. It's the past. Count the future we have planned for ourselves as done. Why? 
so that we can know Christ, win Christ, experience Christ, and what's the ultimate thing? Sister Amanda, share Christ to this darkened, lonely world, lost world. We gotta have Christ. We gotta put Christ on. We can't go out there if we don't have Christ. But if we do have Christ, He compels us to go. Amen. We can't help but go. If we have Christ, come on, brother. We gotta tap out, guys. Anybody know what that means? I'm sure you do. We gotta tap out. It means to surrender. Release your control. I remember taking the ministry bus down to Georgia when we moved because I still wanted to do teams the rest of the nations. Amen. When my preacher died, I don't know, you don't know that, but we went down there and started a women's home called the Door of Hope and my mother and the Lord, my preacher's wife, and my preacher passed. And I took that last bus. I'm like, I'm going to let go of this. Amen. And I had to let go of the last pinky on the steering wheel. And I had to crucify myself. I had to let God crucify me. I had to resign from the ministry. That I can't, I quit UPS. I quit the Masters of Fine Arts degree to go on those buses. And I had to let it all go. Come on, bro. And the day I let it go, that night we had a board meeting. And the individual asked me, my beautiful wife was right there. And I asked her, I said, not my wife, the person in charge, what do you want me to do? And she said, I want you to resign. I said, I know, the Lord told me Saturday at a conference we were in in Kentucky to save our friendship and our love. I had to lay down my life for you. Amen. Amen. Mm How -hmm. many's willing to lay down their life for the other person and then your neighbor? Laying down your life means going on the cross. Amen. 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 When we tap out, you guys, it's humbling. It's hard. It's hurtful to the flesh, to our pride, to our ego, to our reputation. A dead man has no reputation anymore, right? When you flush the past, your, your past is gone. Your ego's gone. Your pride, your reputation's gone. Flush. Right? Come on, bro. But it's so liberating. It's so liberating to be free from you. Amen. To be free from yourself. Amen. It's so liberating. That's the freedom to take on Christ, to die to you. Wow, that's hard preaching. It sounds like it. But it's true. Amen. Surrendering is the key. Surrendering is the key. Dying is the key to fulfilling your destiny. Come on, brother. I'm on. Amen. 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 I want to share some of my testimony, but I don't know. Can I give you a couple? Can I give you a couple examples? Come on. Come on. I'm just wanting to encourage you. Some of you might be looking for a spouse. Some of you might be looking for a ministry. Some of you might be looking for the right job, the right house, the right, I don't know. Amen. I was doing all that. Amen. My first crossroad was in February of 92. Amen. And I saw Jesus, whether you believe it or not. Jesus can do anything he wants. Yes, he sits at the right hand of the Father, but he can appear to the disciples. He can appear to Paul, who was Saul, on the road to Damascus, and he appeared in my darkest hour, in my art studio, when I was getting ready to take my life. My precious Jesus appeared to me, and he said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I turned around, and there he was. Come on, brother. In a beautiful shepherd's garment. Come on. And he had his hands tied behind his back with like a clothesline, a uh, plas white plastic clothesline. And I just went from his face to his hands. I'm like, how can his hands be tied? Pastor Tim. Come on. He said, You tied my hands. I can't answer your prayers. Oh, wow. You tied my hands. You're Luke 
warm. You're walking the fence. I knew you'd be hot or cold. I didn't wasn't going to church. I didn't know these were scriptures. And he said, if you'll give me your heart, every part of your heart, you guys, every part, not 98%. It wasn't the 98% the weed that killed the rat. It was the 2% poison. Everything. If you give me your heart, Vaughn, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. And different things happened left and right, you guys. That was my reward on my first surrender. Amen. I went in my room two nights later. I said, God, I'm not going to drink again. That was February of 1992. 32 years ago, quit cold turkey. That wasn't me. That was the Holy Ghost. I said, no, I don't have any more relations till you bring me my beautiful wife. Amen. I said, God, I'm going to take all my music and show you something right now tangible. I, I know it's not good for me. It just depresses me. I'm going to go and throw it in the dumpster across the street. And I did that, you guys. I went to work the next day at UPS that week. And three Christians came out of the woodwork. I didn't know there was any Christians at UPS where I was working. That Saturday, I went in the UPS to get my check. And there was a precious lady, the custodian, Michelle Bike, And she was crying. And she said, I can't get anybody to help me. I go, help me do what? She said, I go to Sunnyside Projects where the homeless are and the projects and the poor, and nobody wants to help me from my church. And I had another crossroad, didn't I? It was a little one, but it was a big one. My Saturdays, Pastor Tim knows how I love my Saturdays. <laughs> I said, I'll go with you, Michelle. And I was a little fearful, okay? I was one of the few white people there. And I spent every Saturday playing football with the little kids, having birthday parties with the little kids, amen? And God rewarded me. He changed my heart. He changed my heart. I went from the, the news and the raunchy stuff to the little kids in the project. And my dream was to give them funds to help them out of their condition. Amen. I surrendered. Amen. And God rewarded me, you guys. Amen. Amen. That little lady took me to a one that's apostolic, one that's Jesus' name only church. And the guy, I wasn't going to go back. I went a couple times, and the guy was said, "Will you film this for me? I do a local TV show." And I'm like, "I'm in the back, and I'm filming this." And I see this guy walking by beside me, and I'm like, right there, and he's walking in, and he goes all the way down, and he's drunk. And I'm telling you, I, I was a Catholic in the background, and I had Baptist. Me with nothing in the spirit going on. <laughs> and they prayed for him, and I'm zooming in on the camera, and I'm seeing this little guy, not little guy, but Chris Harris was his name. He lived in the Salvation Army in the winter and worked at the carnival in the summer. His mom and dad left him and his brother and sister high and dry. Amen. And God used that little guy. He said, Can you take me to see my old preacher? When I was a little kid in Sunday school, Sister Sarah, my wife, and everybody else that helps with the kids, I remember going to church there, and I want to go back. And I said, where's it at? He said, Atlanta. And I'm in Illinois. I said, Atlanta, Georgia? He said, no, Atlanta, Illinois, it's 20 minutes from here. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, I can take you. I can make a decision. Monday was my day to work out, right? And then going up to UPS, I still in the college scene, right? I'm still kind of, the layers were coming off still. And I had to make another decision, Pastor Tim. So I get to God on Monday. And I went down there, guys. And my goodness, that's how God brought me to my Father and the Lord, preacher Eddie Cunningham, who'd been going to the streets for 30 plus years, taking people to people all across America in big Greyhound buses with swinging beds that they could just go straight there and to their destination, California, LA, Venice Beach, which is the worst place in America. New Orleans, Mardi Gras time. Chicago, lower, lower, Walker Drive, where the police said, you can't go in there. Tampa, New York, New York, New York. He went there every month, busting it, busting it, busting it, till a man with a withered hand who had been in prison because he had caught his 
wife and his business partner in an affair and he shot him dead and he found himself in prison, lost all his money and he was on the streets as a homeless man with a withered arm. And little Brad Egley, 16 years old, they pull up to the stoplight and he saw the guy he said, Mr. God can heal that arm. And the guy started cursing him and his arm came out, Sister Rusty. Miracle power. Wow. I'm looking at miracle power. Wow. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. How many wants the resurrection power of God? We have to die. We have to die. I'm trying to wrap this up. I'm trying to wrap this up. I just want to. I just want to tell you this for me because there might be some in here. I'm still there might be someone looking for a wife or looking for a husband. Amen. I came to a point in April of 1993. I got saved, made him Lord of my life, February 92. April 93. I said, God, I don't need a wife. You're enough, Jesus. And I need it blow my heart, Pastor Tim. I said, Jesus, I don't need a wife. May, every, every day that I open up this Bible, why, 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 Come on, whoa. Whoa. June 1st, eight times in an hour and a half as I was getting ready for UPS for work at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. God gave me the word summer eight times in an hour and a half. The next day, from when I woke up that Saturday morning, Abraham took Sarah to be his wife. I went over and helped. I was weeding, and the, the lady, Susie, said, Hey, Vaughn, can you hook up this Nintendo for my little boy? I don't know how to do that. I was in there for maybe 20 minutes, and she got a phone call from her best friend. Sarah, 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 Sarah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I go to Hutch Food Store to get lunch. Sarah. I'm like, what? All day long, you guys. It's possible if you believe. If you believe. And if you let go of control, let go of the steering wheel. Amen. God had to give me the triangle. I was here. My wife was here. And as we went and sought God, we'd find each other. I was always playing Russian roulette. Come on. The devil could come in any time. And he was breaking my heart left and right. And others were getting their hearts broken. That's what the devil does. But God kept the heal, the brokenhearted. My precious Sarah, from age seven, was up there with Jesus. And at age 19, I was 23. I finally laid it up there to Jesus. He said, seek me first, seek me first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. And I met Sarah Summer, June 3rd, the next day. Friday, I got Summer. Saturday, I got Sarah. Sunday, I went to a, a birthday party at Bishop's Restaurant. And Sarah Summers sent in the restaurant. God rewarded me. Amen. He's going to respect our persons. He's got the same for you. Psalms 37, 4 and 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Amen. Commit. Commit. Commit to Jesus. Commit to Father God. Commit to the Holy Spirit, you guys. He's the creator. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's God. You can trust Him. You can commit to Him. He won't hurt you. He won't fail you. He won't forsake you. He won't abandon you. He won't orphan you. Amen. Amen. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He has a proven track record. That's what I was trying to give you with my little example. It's a proven track record. Amen. And God gets all the glory. Hallelujah. There's a simple key. Go ahead, Shirley. This is the key. And I couldn't wait to tell y'all. 
Amen. Thank you, Michael, for coming on Island. Thank you so much. If we die our selfish desires, if we surrender our will, if we crucify our flesh, we can't do that, you guys, without the Holy Spirit. We have to let go. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit drew us to Jesus. We didn't draw ourselves to Jesus. Jesus introduces us to the Holy Spirit because he knows we can't do this without the Holy Spirit. We can't do it in our own will. Amen. We should be going to die before our leaders, after leaders. We can't do it. But God gave us the power of God, the Spirit of God that moved upon the face of the waters. And when God said, let there be light, the Holy Spirit gave light, created light. That's who God the Father in Jesus the Son wants us to have. It's a gift. He's a gentleman like Pastor Tim has been preaching. Amen. God gave us our own will. He's just asking us to take a chance. And let the Holy Spirit come in tonight. Flood your entire being. Change your mindset. Remove your fears. Remove your inhibitions. Remove your hesitancy. Remove the hardness of your hearts. The Holy Spirit has an incredible life for you and me. Let the Holy Spirit open it up like a flower. If we try to open it up, we'll ruin it. But if he opens it up, the whole world will see it. He will draw us close. He will grow our faith. He will unfold his plan. He will reward our obedience. He will give us the desires of our hearts. He will change those desires of our hearts. He will live in us, reside in us, and dwell in us. God, God will. He will produce the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. He'll manifest the gifts when we need them, like a gear, like a transmission. When we need it, there's third gear. And then if somebody's in your path and they need heal, there's fourth gear. But He gets all the glory. Our job is to surrender and let go and let God do the rest. It's so easy, so awesome. Don't let tonight slip by without God. Come without you giving your life to God, please. I'm not begging you, I'm just asking you. You know what? We're all going to pass someday. We're all going to surrender to the King. Would you rather surrender tonight and get all the benefits of heaven? Or surrender when it's too late and bow your knee and confess Him as Lord and get cast into the lake of fire and hell where there's gnashing of teeth? This is serious. Father God, I just pray, Father, open up this altar to you, God. God, I pray, I felt like I gave you the, the word that you wanted me to give, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for preaching through me, Lord. I can't do this, God, but you never, you never forsake this, God. God, thank you by the Holy Spirit that you're ministering to my brothers and sisters. God, draw them with your cords of love, God. Draw them tonight. Don't let them leave tonight, God, without knowing your precious Son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior, without giving you their heart, God, without letting go tonight and letting you, God, have your way in them, through them, for them. Oh, God, I pray for my brothers and sisters tonight, God. I pray for myself, God. Oh, God, continue to draw us, continue to mold us, Continue to help us, Lord. Crucify our flesh. Deny ourselves. Take up our cross, God. And follow you, God. In the name of Jesus. And everybody sing.